Hi, my name's Kate and I am the owner and creator of Kate and Barrel Designs in Tucson, Arizona. And today I'm going to show you guys how to start to paint your kitchen cabinets using Wise Owl's one hour enamel paint. So before we get started, I wanna explain what I've done with this sample board, this kitchen cabinet door. So you guys know exactly how I went about prepping it before I go ahead and start priming, okay? So what I did is I took my sander. You can take a, take a flat mouse sander or a flat sander. I have a Surf Prep Pro. So I utilize my Surf Prep Pro and basically scuff sand slash strip sanded whatever I could quickly over the top of this to get off any kind of sheen that's still on here, okay? So I kind of wanted to get rid of the sheen. So mostly all the sheen is gone. The top coat of this protectant coat is gone, okay? And it also gave me a nice smooth surface to start working with, which is great. <clears throat> um, if you have issues with uh, grainy, grainy uh, cabinets and you want them to be less grainy, you can always do a grain filler as well before you go ahead and you start priming or doing any of your painting. So just think about kind of the look that you want to achieve. And if you don't mind the green in the cabinets, great, go for it without using a green filler. If you do want kind of a, a, a more modern feel to it without the green, you can definitely use a green filler and that'll kind of alleviate that. Also the primer definitely helps alleviate some of the green look as well. So kind of think about those things. The other thing that you wanna think about too is whether you're gonna hand paint or whether you're gonna spray. A lot of times um, people can go to Home Depot and get sprayers and rent them, which is great. You can buy a home right sprayer on Amazon for less than a hundred bucks, I believe. So that's a really nice um, kind of less expensive way to be able to spray your cabinets if you wanna do something like that, okay? But basically, even if you're hand painting, spraying, you're definitely gonna be taking all your cabinets off and you're gonna be prepping every single one of your doors, okay? So you clean, get all the grease and grime and everything off of those cabinets. Then you're gonna sand, scuff sand, get as much of that top coat off as you possibly can. Clean again, so get that sand off of there, all that extra kind of leftover residue. And then I go ahead and clean again. And then just make sure too, is that you clean off your cleaner. I know that sounds kind of funny, but cleaners, if you're even if you're using a vinegar water soap solution or if you're using a crud crutter, a degreaser, anything like that, those are all great products, but they can leave a filmy residue. So you don't want anything between the primer and the actual board. So make sure that you go ahead and you rinse off with water any of that additional residue that could be on there and just clean water, right? So you would just wanna rinse off. Um, in my classes, we even go to the kitchen sink and just literally rinse the boards off, dry them off right away and get them ready to go, okay? So that's kind of basic steps that you wanna think about when you're talking about cleaning and prepping before you even start your projects. This is, there's, <laughs> there is no, no prep paint especially when it comes to painting your cabinets. Think about the grease and the grime and the cooking and the fingers and everything that touches those cabinets throughout the entire day for years and years and years. It's pretty gross when you start thinking about stuff like that. So you definitely wanna make sure that you've prepped and you've cleaned and you've sanded and you're ready to go, okay? So that's what we've done here to get this board ready to go for you guys, all right? So next step after doing this is that we're gonna prime. Wise Owl has three color primers that you can go with, three different primers basically. They're all the same primer, they all have the same ability. It's our stain blocking primer, which is awesome. Okay, so if you're worried about bleed through, here's what you're gonna do as well. Okay, so do not skip this step. Primer is extremely important, and utilizing our primer with our Wise Owl paint, one hour enamel paint is really the step that you wanna take. So many times I hear, well, I use Zinsser and now I now my paint's cracking. Well, it's because Zinsser is not chemically balanced to go with the one hour enamel paint. So the primer and the paint go hand in hand. So this is, this is the primer and this is the one hour enamel and Urban Rhino that we're gonna be painting today. So just really think about that. 
is how much are you investing in yourself, the effort that you're putting through um, with your painting and your products. You're saving thousands of dollars by doing this on your own, that's for sure. So don't skimp on your primer and your products and your brushes and things like that. You wanna do it right the first time, you don't wanna to have to go back and do this all over again. So from other people's experiences, even my own mistakes that I've made, please adhere and think about that. Saving a couple bucks is not gonna really save you if you have to do it all over again. It may save the wallet, but it's definitely not gonna save your precious time, which is really important as well, okay? So, like I said, our stain blocking primer comes in three different colors, okay? We have clear. So if you wanna do like a distress look on your cabinets, clear is the way to go, okay? Because you can do any color, distress those cabinets, you will not see the under primer because we have a clear, okay? So clear is a great, great option for that. We have gray. I'm gonna be utilizing gray today, okay? Why am I utilizing gray? Well, cause I'm painting Urban Rhino and Urban Rhino is a pretty gray color, okay? So gray is gonna go great under your blacks, your blues, um, your reds, your yellows, all those colors, okay? That's what you're gonna wanna use your gray under and your grace. Uh, and then we have white, okay? So that's gonna look awesome under your uh, antique villas, your snow owls, your uh, alabaster. So all those colors, that's what you're gonna wanna use your white primer with, okay? So think about your the color that you're painting your cabinets and then the primer that you're gonna start with. The better the primer is color match wise to go with the paint you're using, the less time you're gonna be spending on putting coats on there as well. Also keep in mind too, with whites, you will tend to do maybe an extra coat or an extra half coat than you maybe would with a, a black, okay? Like a jet black. So think about that as well, all right? Also know that this, this is a one hour enamel, okay? So it will take an hour to dry. It'll take less than an hour sometimes depending on where you are. But our recommended dry time is actually two hours. So it dries in one hour, ready for a recoat in two, okay? So just start thinking about that as well. So back to the primers really quick. So with the primer, I said it's a stain blocking primer. It is only a stain blocking primer if you let it dry for four to six hours and apply a second coat. And that coat has to then dry for four to six hours as well. That's how the stain blocking primer works. It needs to be able to have enough time to dry and get into, soak into, all the nooks and crannies of all those tannins that are possibly sitting on top of this, list, this piece, okay? So in order to do that and make sure that you really are getting the stain blocking properties of the primer, four to six hours dry time. And if you really wanna be careful, go with the six, okay? Just in case, especially if you think you have a bleeder. How do you know if you have a bleeder? Usually as soon as you start applying the primer, you can see the tannins come right up to the surface, okay? You apply that water and they just come right up, okay? And it'll start to kind of look kind of like a, a grody color, all right? So let's get priming. I know that was a lot of talking. I know that's a lot of information, but it's really, really important information that you guys think about when you start tackling those cabinets, okay? So here's my gray primer. This has obviously been opened before. So think about your primer. It sometimes is gonna look like this. I don't know if you guys can see the separation in there. So that's okay, separation's totally fine. A lot of times the white will have, have a totally discolored. The clear will look kind of like opaque-y. So that's okay, the clear isn't actually gonna be clear in the can, it'll be clear once it dries, okay? So stir stick, okay? You really just wanna stir that primer up, okay? So this is kind of the nice consistency of the primer. This is the gray. It's all stirred up and ready to go. I'm gonna be using my 045 in my kitchen cabinet bundles, my bathroom beautification bundles. You automatically get an 045 brush. The other brush that you might wanna consider if you're not gonna roll and you wanna brush your boxes is the B brush, okay? So this is the B um, B10, 
And this is kind of the one that I would recommend for your boxes. So things to think about as well, getting those right products and, and what you wanna use for them, okay? So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, get some primer on my brush like this, all right? And I'm gonna start working the edges. I have this on a um, Lazy Susan so it can spin which is really nice. So if you're planning <laughs> to do your whole kitchen, you can get a kit of Lazy Susans. It's so easy. You can even um, store and lay out your cabinets as they're drying on your, uh, <laughs> you should do baking sheets if you want to. I've seen people do like, like uh, boards between horseshoes that you can get. So. Think about that as well. Where are you gonna lay them while they dry? So it's it's nice and, and a good spot for them to sit without damaging all your hard work on your actual painting, right? Okay. I paint with the green. So again, making sure I'm going with the green. I'm not using a ton of primer, but I'm also not being extremely frugal either. I'm making sure that I'm using enough to get on there. I will be doing a second coat. So keep that in mind as well. We will definitely be doing a second coat of primer. And there is no, I mean, some people have different methods that once they start going, they're like, okay, I'm gonna do all my edges first, or I'm gonna start with the middle first, or it's kind of however you wanna do it, right? So you kind of figure out your jive and how that's gonna work. Get in those corners. Definitely get in those corners, okay? All right, and now I'm gonna get the middle. Okay, and I'm gonna go around and check my sides again. There we go. And then obviously if I was doing kitchen, I'd be moving on to the next one, putting this away to dry, moving it over, switching it out, and keeping, keep, keeping the kind of momentum going with this. So what I'm gonna do now though is let this dry and we'll go ahead and apply a second coat together and then after that, we'll be able to start our one hour enamel. I will see you guys back here soon. Okay, we are back. So our first coat of primer has dried. We're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and apply the second coat of primer. This time we'll try the reverse of how we started. So I started on the outside first time. So let's try and start on the inside this time. I want you guys to kind of see the different ways that you can apply and the patterns that you can use. This is also, I didn't really talk about the Klingon brush. I am using the 045 Klingon. The Klingons come in all sorts of different sizes. I showed you the block as well. They are the best brushes. Um, soap and water cleanup with the primer and the one hour enamel. So nothing crazy special about cleanup or anything like that. Super easy, just like you would any other paint. It's water-based, so you're fine there. This isn't an oil-based paint or, or primer. So you're totally 100% good. And you can see the coverage that I'm getting on this is absolutely amazing. And I'm just going through getting my edges all the way around. Making sure I don't have any drips, making sure I have even coverage everywhere and just applying that primer. Now, a lot of times people 
um, if you want a smooth finish, a really, really smooth finish between your primer and your paint, you can always take a really, really light um, like sand sander or um, sanding block. I'd recommend like a 320 or higher. And you can go ahead and just kind of use that sanding block and give it a nice kind of smoothed out finish, okay? Is it required? No. Are you still going to get an amazing result even if you don't do that? Yes, but it is something that is kind of a little trick if you are really looking for that smooth, 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 fine finish. Um, you're going to get it really anyways, but just kind of a little extra to get you there. So, so again, we've got our second coat on here. Once this dries, we will be able to move on to actually painting with our Urban Rhino. So I will see you guys soon again. Okay, so we are back. The second coat has finished its dry time. So you can go ahead and kind of see, look at the coverage we have there. Everything's nice, even coverage, and we're gonna be ready to finally start putting on our one hour enamel. So before we start painting with our one hour enamel, I wanna read the back of the can to you. Cause a lot of times I have customers who come to me and ask me questions and I have no problem answering any of your questions, by all means, please ask away. However, a lot of the information can actually be found right back here. Okay. So remember one hour enamel is a premium enamel paint. One hour enamel is an incredibly tough, fast drying acrylic enamel for interior and exterior use on surfaces that require quick return to service and abrasion resistant finish. I would say that would definitely be kitchen cabinets. It's also front doors. And I've also used the one hour enamel on concrete. So it is amazing and holds up great on concrete flooring. So um, I'm actually gonna be painting my pat patio in a little bit. <clears throat> it is water-based, so it poses no fire hazard or objectionable odor. It does have a slight odor, but it's not overpowering or overwhelming or anything too intense, okay? You could definitely use it inside and be okay. The product is based on a specialized acrylic resin that dries quickly to a tough, durable film that has incredible strength, blocking, and abrasion resistance along with superior adhesion properties. For use on primed or previously painted interior wood, metal, plaster, drywall, and masonry substrates. So primed, 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 super important to prime, okay? You can put this on a glassy surface without priming and it will scratch right off, okay? It needs that extra grip. It needs something to grip onto. So previously painted surface that's grippy, yes, it can grip to that. So primed surfaces on your cabinets, okay? If you painted your cabinets previously but sealed it with something, you're gonna have to get through that sealer, scuff it, do what you need to, and then prime, okay? So, um, let's see. And the one thing that it says is ideal for use on doors, cabinets, trim, handrails, shelving, furniture, concrete, and steel surfaces. Again, with a primer. No top coat is necessary. How much do you love that? We are not going to have to top coat this. Okay. So it has a really nice satin finish to it and it's perfect for that. Okay. So no top coating needed. Two coats of this and you're going to be done and you're not going to have to go back and top coat or wax or do anything like that. Actually, I do not recommend waxing your one hour enamel at all. So then it goes on to talk about surface prep, okay? The surface to, to be painted must be clean and free of dirt, oils, mildew, wax, grease, rust, or loose flaking paint. Wax should be removed by solvent cleaning. Grease and oil should be removed by using an oil and grease emulsifier. Rust must be removed by hand sanding vigorously or by conscientious power tool cleaning. Remember, loose paint by scraping. Um, oh wait, remove loose paint by scraping. Feather sand rough edges to ensure a smooth finished coat. Glossy surfaces must be dulled by lightly sanding. Remember, I talked about the prep of this board. It had a glossy surface, so I dulled that by sanding, okay? Remove sanding dust before paint application. Use only in a well-vented area. Keep container closed when not in use. In case of spillage, absorb with uh, inert material and dispose of in accordance with local regulations. Wash thoroughly after use. Use only with adequate ventilation, okay? 
So again, I'm, I'm in my studio. I have ad adequate ventilation. I'm not in a tiny little room. So that's going to work for me. So a lot of times people say, okay, well, how much is this going to get me? Okay. Well, a gallon gets you 400 to 450 square feet. So if you say, okay, well, then a quart would probably get me a little over 100 square feet. So think about that as well. It dries in 30 minutes. Recoat in as little as one hour with preferential drying conditions. Okay. I typically wait an hour after it dries and then I can do my recoat. Okay, typically it does dry in 30 minutes, no joke, but I like to wait a little bit longer just to be 100% safe and not ruin anything that I've already done. Okay, um, let's see. Do not use a high speed drill as this may cause bubbles. Oh, sprayer. Because of its speed of dry, this product is best applied with a sprayer. We're gonna hand paint today, but yes, you can use it with a sprayer and Bonus, if you use it with a sprayer, I don't water this down when I put it in a sprayer. You can up to 10%, but I don't like to. There's no reason to add water to this. I'd add 10% to the primer, but there's really no reason to add water to your one-hour enamel if you're going to spray. Okay? Um, so, let's see. Larger surface can be finished by rolling a short nap roller or tripping the finish off. Must be applied with a synthetic, may also be applied with a synthetic brush. Well, that's our clean on today clean equipment in warm soapy water okay so that is all the information on this for you all right so I know that's a lot of info to take in sorry it's it's a lot but remember making sure that you know all the steps making sure that you read everything knowing exactly how much paint you're going to need to get you where you need to go if you're spraying you're going to need a little bit more because you get overspray so think about that too okay so my kitchen cabinet bundle comes with um, four quarts. So basically you get a gallon for your entire kitchen. If you have some leftover, great. You can paint your door or you could start painting something else in the house. So just think about that too, okay? So like I said, we're gonna use Urban Rhino today. Urban Rhino is a pretty new released color. Um, I think it just released, oh gosh, what? Three, four months ago. Looks kind of like that. Okay, I'm gonna stir it. You're not supposed to shake it. You don't wanna create bubbles. So this is the consistency of the one hour enamel. A lot of people were really surprised at how kind of thin and runny it is. It self levels. This is a self leveling paint, okay? When I do classes, a lot of times, remember I said it dries really fast, okay? So you're gonna lay this on and it's gonna start drying almost immediately. So if you see a spot that you don't like, let it go, okay? Because a lot of times that spot is gonna self-level right in and it's not gonna be an issue at all, okay? So just kind of keep that in mind when you do this. The other thing is you wanna make sure you have enough paint on your brush and it's loaded, but not so much paint that you have drips everywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna start with a nice amount. I'm gonna start in the middle. There you go, okay. I got this one little thing in there. See me, me being naughty and touching things? Okay, so I'm gonna skip to the outside now. And spin this. Need some more paint on there. Get along my edge. There we go. Okay. Get a little bit more paint. There's the drip, it's okay. Kind of get under there.
get those edges. Okay, so then I want to be able to come in and get along here, right? Get my paint, my brush, bring it through. I'm gonna leave it like that for now and let it do its thing and self-level. There's a few spots that I missed, it's okay. I'm gonna be okay about it. I'm gonna be able to go back and get those, but I want the paint to do its job and self-level. So again, if I was doing the entire kitchen, I would go ahead and make sure, I wanna close this up really quick. I would go ahead and just move on to the next one and allow this to continue to sit. The only thing that I will say is I like to go through and just kind of make sure that I don't have any crazy, crazy drips on my edges, which I don't, everything looks good. There are a few parts where it looks like I have more paint than others, but it's okay. Cause like I said, it's gonna go ahead and just kind of self level in, okay? You may look and go, oh, look, it looks like she's got, she's got brush marks, oh no, it's okay. It's all gonna self level out, all right? So we're gonna let that happen. And as soon as this is done drying, I'm gonna come back and show you guys how to get that second coat on there and give it that fine finish. See you soon. Okay, and we are back. So we've got a nice dry one coat coverage, beautiful door. Aww. Okay. So now we're gonna go ahead and apply the second coat and I gotta make sure I get in all these nice corners right here, okay? So, little trick. I use Saran Wrap for my brush to make sure that it stays nice um, and doesn't get all dried out, especially if I know I'm coming back and doing a project within a few hours, okay? So brush, I'm gonna start on the insides this time. So I have enough time to get all in these corners. You wanna work fast enough. There we go, okay. Make sure nothing's pulled up and then that'll be able to self-level. Go ahead and get this middle section right here. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and get around edges. I don't press very heavy. I have a nice, it's firm, but it's not like I'm, you know, pushing down into my brush bristles. So you can kind of see like put just enough pressure, but not so much that I'm, you know, jamming in so you can see the difference and how I press down. And go around and get my edges. There's a little drip right there, so that's perfect timing. And voila. Super simple, super easy. Now I'm gonna let it dry, okay? So again, there's a few spots in here where I'm like, ooh, I'm not 100% sure about them. I don't necessarily like the way they look right now, but I'm gonna let it do its job and self-level and hopefully even all out the way it's supposed to. And I say hopefully and then every single time it does. 
And then we can come back and I'm gonna show you guys the end result of what it looks like after the second coat and the smoothness of it all and how it's kind of just gonna smooth out self level and look absolutely gorgeous. So I'll see you back again soon. Hey guys, so we're back, yay! We finished our last coat, so our second coat, full coverage right here with our Urban Rhino in Wiseau One Hour Enamel, and look at that finish. It just looks beautiful. So that is how easy this really, really is. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I'm happy to answer them. If you like this video, I would love it if you give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. I am doing new videos all the time for you guys. If you are local in Tucson, Arizona, and you want to come to a class in person, because I also do kitchen cabinet painting classes in person, check out my website for that. I'll put the link in the comments. If you're ready to go ahead and tackle your own project, you can purchase all these products on my website as well. I'll put that link in the comments too. So just to review what we did here, we went through our proper prep. I talked about how you clean, degrease, all that good stuff, scuff sand, get rid of any, any nice sheen that was on here previously. And then you go ahead and apply two coats of Wise Owl Stain Blocking Primer. We chose gray. Why did we choose gray? Because we were using a gray toned uh, paint that was going over the top. If you're doing a red, you choose gray. Yellows, you choose gray for the most part. Um, blues, you choose gray, all that good stuff. White obviously is available for underneath your whites. And then we also have a clear if you want to distress, okay? One caveat here that I need to mention and, and talk to you guys about really quick is that if you choose to do a glaze over the top of this, and Wiseau has a ton of options for your glazing, but say you wanted to glaze to create a kind of rusticy finish to this or, or kind of a deeper, deeper coloring, uh, you would then have to seal, okay? So right now, this is good as is. 24 hours, you can go ahead and put it back up. I would wait 24 hours just to make sure. It just, it's dry within an hour. Technically, you could put it back up in less than that, but I like to be safe rather than sorry for you guys. So 24 hours is my recommendation. You can go ahead, put everything back up, hardware back on, all that good stuff after 24 hours. And within 14 days, this is fully cured for you. Okay, so light use is totally fine. You're good to go. Uh, scrub clean, no worries, just wipe off, you're good to go. So, other thing that I wanted to talk to you about, mention really, really quick, I mentioned that obviously you'd have to seal a glaze, you can choose to seal the glaze with our Wise Owl varnish, or you can go ahead and use our one hour enamel top coat in clear, okay? So the clear also comes in three different finishes. So we have matte, which is a little bit less shiny than this, Satin, which is about the finish that you get right here that's built in already. And then a semi-gloss if you want something kind of super shiny, okay? So those are your options as well and something to consider when you're working on your projects and kind of the look that you're trying to get. So I hope you enjoyed this again. My name's Kate, owner of Kate and Barrel Designs, Wiseau Rep in Tucson, Arizona. Until next time, you guys, thanks. Bye.